Hey guys, it's Lucas here, and today we're going to have a look at the Go programming language, and that is because I'm currently learning it actually, and there is a, well, concept in it that I really enjoy, and I'd just like to show you today, because it's pretty amazing, and I think you are going to like it as well, if you have never really used Go. I'm, well, I personally don't know of it in Swift or Rust, so if it is available in those languages, I'm sorry, I actually have never looked it up, but I'm just going to show you it in Go. So what am I even talking about? It is called variadic functions, or I think they just call it variadic. But well, what in the world is variadic or a variadic function? Well, that's what we're gonna look at. Uh, that's what, that is what we're gonna look at right now. So let's start off by opening up the terminal and heading to the desktop, because that's the area where gonna well create our folder and let's say make make directory and let's just call it variadic like that and let's head right into it and now let's actually drag and drop that and boom and what we are going to what we're gonna need is a main.go file it's gonna be package main because you need that and we're gonna import fimd so format because that's what we need in order to print to uh, print stuff and whatever and also we are in need of the main function and then we're done with the basic things that we're in the need of and now we can actually start off by writing some code so a variadic function if we create one looks like this. So if we type in func and we let's say add numbers or add nums for our main package, well you are probably you probably know that now in in Swift or something you could I'm just gonna code it in Swift right now. You're you would do something like this probably like int. And then you have an array of number of ints or of integers. So you are able to do that but in um, go there's also another possibility which looks like the following which is let's just use, uh, use flow at 64s because you can store decimal numbers but also just like full numbers in here so integers well but they're typed as flow at 64 but you know what i mean and now what we do is just put three dots in front of it and that makes it variadic so that means what we can do now is pass in multiple well arguments when we call the function and it won't it won't cry it's just gonna do whatever you what you whatever you tell it to do and at the end obviously we want to have a, a full number i actually have this well example as a tweet it's all all of that is in an image or something like that but i thought it would be nice to actually just to actually explain it. So what we can do now is we could say for in a for loop and here we could have an in like an i or whatever but let's just not use it. We don't we don't really need to say where we are in the loop and then we what we can do is number and then assign it. So that's like a variable actually and then what we can say is range numbers. And now what we can do is if we have a variable right here you can define variables like this but you can also define them like this let's say result and that's going to be of type float 64 and that's what we're going to return at the end sorry result and here what we're doing is a result plus equals and then we're going to say well the current number so one cool thing about this actually is float 64 is a type that we assign it and well if you don't give it a type actually so if you would you if you were just to say var in that sorry not, not even that if you were just to say this zero that would be of type kind it's just a number in a kind like no it would not be of type kind it would be kind so that means it does not really know the type at the at the moment but at compile time it's going to decide is it a flow 64 or is it an integer like int so that's what it's going to do but here we actually tell it's going to be a flow 64 as that is our res 
return type. And now what we're able to do is if we actually call this and let's already print it out. And we let's say add nums here. Um, actually, if I show you that again, here you see there is interface. And before that, we also have three dots. That means it actually lets you print out as much as you want, which is pretty cool. So what we can do now is call a function and then we can say, let's say five, 10, five, and 100. So that will make 120, right? So let's try it out. Let's actually run, go run main.go, and it's 120. So that's pretty decent. And another cool thing about the Go program, uh, programming language is you are actually able to, let's say, make a slice, they call it here. So if we actually say numbers, and then we have a, a slice of type float 64, and let's just type in some other numbers like 35 and 15 and 50 and let's just say 100, that will make 200. So at the moment it's saying pollution here, you don't really do anything with it, but that's okay. So this is a slice and it's not multiple numbers. So now we're we're gonna have a problem, right? So if we type, put that in here, it's gonna, not gonna let us do that. It's gonna complain. Here you see a slice, flo uh, a slice of float 64 is not float 64. So we have a problem here, but we can actually solve this fairly easily. What we can actually do is just put three dots right here at the at the end. And if we go through it, boom, it actually makes this all easier. So that's pretty cool about Go. And I think that's a reason to get going with it. And yeah, I'm gonna have a like even deeper look into Go throughout the next couple of weeks because I think that's going to be the most pro uh, most important programming language in the future. So yeah, I'm going to look at it and you may know too if that actually convinced you for some reason. I really enjoy it. Obviously you can do just an array and that works similarly fast, but it works, so that's pretty cool. And also, I'm currently working on my blog. I mean, you can view it if you go to this link, but that's not gonna be the URL at the end, so don't be worried. I'm also gonna update the font a little on this page, but I actually like the design. So, yeah. You see, there are actually articles from over a year ago. That's pretty scary, but anyways. Thank you for watching, and I actually hit 120 subscribers, and that's pretty decent, so thank you very much for that, and Leave in a comment, leave me a, just recommend something that you'd like to see, suggest something, and I I would definitely make that if it makes sense at least. So some guy said he'd like to have more videos on the material framework for Swift, I think, or he meant more framework, uh, framework videos. So I, I will look into that, I guess, but at the moment I don't really do that. And yeah, I'm just gonna see what's, going to happen anytime soon. And as I've said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.